Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. What am I going to get for you today? Uh, can I have some Mountain Doritos? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Talk About Games. With tacos. From Taco Bell. So what do we have today to eat? Why, you have diabetes. And I have something that will probably give me diarrhea. But that's they're, okay. They're, they're casual diarrhea. Anyway, today we are talking about pinball, specifically video games based off of pinball. We want to do an actual pinball episode at some point, but yeah, uh, pinball machines are expensive, man. Today, we are talking about pinball-based video games, particularly some retro ones. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, eat that taco. So to start off, we're going to talk about uh, a classic game, one that we actually played in our childhoods. Him more so than me, though, I did own this, and that is Pokemon Pinball. came out, uh, you know, since I was born. And that's why it's only natural that uh, he played this one. Oh. So are we doing red or blue? Yeah, blue. Blue all the way. Oh shit, it's thundering. I haven't played this for, like, maybe five years, so... Just trying to get used to it. So tell, tell me about it. What's the point of Pokemon Pinball? Uh, it's Pinball, but Pokemon related. So are you saying that... Pokemon Pinball is Pinball with Pokemon? I am saying that, yes. No shit. So, uh, as you see here, this is Jinx, and as we all know, Jinx is uh, the racial controversy Pokemon, destroying the minds of our youth. So you just caught, speaking of Jinx, you just caught Jinx. Uh, so what happens when you catch something in this? When you catch something, uh, you, it's sort of like moving on to the next section in the game. You just keep on moving on in the game. Like, it'll appear sometimes and you move on to the next section. Right. I saw, like, a Pokedex option earlier, so what's all that about? Uh, as you catch Pokemon, it fills up. Rapid It likes cheese, nuts, fruits, and berries. Yeah, but this isn't a forest. It's an open field. It also comes out into open fields to steal food from stupid travelers. And for those of you who don't know what Pokemon is, Get um, life. Pokemon Pinball, final thoughts? It is one of my childhood favorites other than the actual Pokemon games. If you're looking for just a game to something that you can just play constantly, it's really simple. You don't really have to think about anything except for a final score. Yeah, and it's very easy to pick up, like my copy, granted, it's missing uh, the, the like battery cover piece. Uh, but I picked it up for five bucks at my local game exchange, so uh, there's that. And also it's really easy to play, like I just explained. A yeah. and flip. It's... Yeah, it's a pick up and play game. Yes. What's your thoughts on Pokemon Pinball uh, as I get my salsa out? Pokemon Pinball, it's a very simple game. It has to be one of my best childhood memory games, at least game series. Mm -hmm. Because I played Pokemon Pinball uh, quite a lot, but I played the Pokemon Pinball uh, where it was the Ruby Sapphire for Game Boy Advance. I played that so much more. Outside is bad for you. Yeah, no, the graphics suck, and um, the tutorial took 18 years. So next up is Alien Crush. Uh, Alien Crush is part of a series consisting of this game, a game called Devil's Crush, and a game called Jockey Crush. But this is a, a PC Engine Turbo Graphics game. This is obviously the Japanese PC Engine version, as you can tell by the copious amounts of Japanese. So 
So this is Alien Crush for the NEC Politically Correct Engine. Also the, the turbo graphics, are, are we playing fast pinball or slow pinball? Fast, you yeah. fast lane all the time. Lunar Eclipse or Demons, uh, let's, let's do both because we're going to take turns. Uh, I'll do, uh, I'll do Lunar Eclipse because I love space. SPACE! Alright. Ooh, all fancy. So, my only experience with this game is when I was over here and we played this. So, the controls are exactly the same as Pokemon Pinball. Uh, button 1, which I guess would correspond to the A button on the Game Boy, is right paddle, and button, uh, and pressing left on the D-pad is the left uh, bumper. This is actually one of the cheaper games on the PC Engine. This was uh, the first one I got, I think I paid something like... 12 bucks for it. The graphics are really, wow. like, they're yeah. really popping. So there's a sequel to this game that apparently is better, though I haven't played it and I don't own it, and it's called Devil's Crush, which is, imagine this though, instead of like an uh, Aliens alien. aesthetic, it's like a satanic thing. Also, I there's this newer one called Candy Crush, if you have heard of that. It's on iOS. So what do you think about the look of this game? This is upscaled right now. Right? Yeah, so this is, so for those wondering, this is, so this is being recorded on a PC Engine mod for RGB SCART. But still, what do you think about it, just graphically? Uh, one word, unique, and two words, very unique, and a few words, it it's, has this strange aesthetic that's very cool. Alright, so Nonsense. Nick, now you take, uh, your turn. Start again. There's not a lot of tracks in the game, but I think the soundtrack's good, especially for a turbo game. It's got that little pace with it. Yeah, but also what I kind of like the turbo sound trip chip as nerdy as that sound. Is. Who would you say is the better pinball player out of the two of us? Uh, depends. Video pinball, I'd say you so far. Actual pinball, I, I'd be honest, I think I'd probably do a bit better. Aliens! Final thoughts on Alien Crush. I, I'd recommend it, yeah. What would you say about the pinball physics? I'd say they're very similar to the Pokemon in pinball physics, like... Really? I, I, I feel like they're a bit better. It feels like the ball has a bit more weight to it. Well, for uh, the Pokemon Advanced one, yeah, this is pretty much on par with that. I don't think any of these are going to have, like, spot-on realistic pinball physics, because I feel like that's impossible in a video game, but... And this one's, I'd say, is definitely a bit closer hey. than Pokemon. What do you think of Alien Crush? It actually looks really amazing for... When was that released? Like... 1991 or so? It looks like it could have been 10 years ago, max. I wouldn't go that far, but I'd say like PS1 era. Gameplay-wise, it's addicting. It's absolutely addicting. We had to actually almost... We had to stop ourselves from playing more of it. I almost played more of it. But it's really a wonderful game, and if you have it... Uh, one of the systems, either Turbo or PC Engine, and highly recommend it. Finally, we get to the final game, which the is Austin Powers Pinball for the PS1. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so mine's complete, even though the case is damaged because I found it for $1.99 at half price books. It was actually the same day I found that Game Boy camera that had those uh, dick pics on it. Seriously, who the fuck takes dick pics of a Game Boy camera? Oh, that's nasty. So this is Austin Powers Pinball, which came out uh, in 2001, which was the same year as Goldmember. Would you like a schmuck and a pancake? It only has the first two movies. Like, look at this stock Windows Movie Maker background. So let's get started with International Man of Mystery, which I'm assuming is about a man that is international and mysterious. Groovy, baby! That's an utterly shagadelic Austin Powers. You must save the world from the never-ending threat of Dr. Evil. Defrost after 30 years in cryogenic suspension. Catch up to the 90s and help them help up. I messed it up. I messed stop, it up. Stop Dr. Evil's evil plan to extort money from one of the people. Beware beware women and, uh, and a lot of vagina. Behave. Loading. Or no, you know what it looks like? It looks like something off Kid Picks. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Yikes. This, this looks like a clusterfuck, but this, at the same no, time it looks fitting. No, it's a beauty of a board. It feels, like, really slippery. Well, they oiled up the field before. Like, you really feel, like, the ball feels like it has almost no weight to it. 
It's like you're playing pinball on the moon. What's interesting is, so you use the bumpers for this one instead of the typical, you know, A button equivalent to left D-pad. It makes sense. The board itself looks a little bit like MS Paint. I too can use a transparency tool. If this game was an animal, it'd be a dragon. Because I'd be dragging my nuts across it. Oh, game over, good. This one's going to be through quicker than I expected. <laughs> Dr. Evil has swollen your mojo, and that spells bad news for bits and pieces. Literally, it's a thing that was in his testicles for some reason. With CIA agent Felicity Shagwa at your side, covering the rear- Oh my. Oh my. Fight through Dr. Evil's henchmen from the vocal froth of the encyclopedia. Rocket from Dr. Evil's hollowed out volcano lair to the secret moon base and stopped a giant laser from destroying the world. Travel back in time to recover your mojo and save Felicity from certain death. The top part of this actually looks pretty good. The bottom part looks once again like uh, MS Paint. Though it is doing something that was a gripe I had with the past two games. It actually scrolls. Granted, it's kind of like a snappy scroll, which is a little off-putting. But it scrolls nonetheless. The moral of this game is there is no hope. Everything is is fruitless. Your efforts are in vain, and you'll never have a shot at happiness in life. It's a very depressing game. It explores Austin's inner psyche. 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 I love how uh, some of the gray from uh, the logo is uh, dripped onto Doctor Evil's head. This game had a very big budget of at least twenty-seven dollars. On the whole, this game does not play good. I know good and bad are in the eye of the beholder, but at the same time. You could say, well, yes, that plate filled with shit is, it tastes exactly like s'mores. So anyways, what do you think of this game? I remember we played it a lot while back and we had more fun with it than we did now, but probably because we weren't playing any other pinball games. Yeah, we didn't have anything to compare it to. It's not a very good game. It looks like we could have made it in Microsoft Paint. Graphically, yes. Sound-wise, it's, it was kind of weird tinny sounding, you know? Like yeah. you recorded it all using a VHS recorder or something. And then recorded that recording with a VHS recorder. Exactly. And in Pokemon Pinball and in Alien Crush, the ball has a little bit of weight. It's not like perfect pinball physics, but the ball has some bit of weight to it. It has some gravitas to it. This was like playing pinball on the moon. Granted, one of them was based off Dr. Evil's moon base. Hey, maybe, maybe they were going for it, authenticity. It was planned. 100%. But seeing as this game looks like it had the same type of budget for uh, that I would if I were to make a game, and I am a poor college student who eats at Taco Bell on a regular basis. Are you too yep. poor for Taco Bell? You know, I would taco about that sometime. I'm going to punch you. Yeah. I, I'm just kidding. I love Nick. He's, he's a good friend. So let, let's talk about our final thoughts. Okay, so... Uh, but how would you rank the games we played? Alien Crush, Pokemon Pinball, and then Austin Powers. Really? I thought you'd put Pokemon Pinball first. Now, you see, for Pokemon Pinball versus Pokemon Pinball Advance, mm -hmm. for the Advance, I would put it above. Right. Because I'm very biased. I, I can respect that. I, I would say exactly the same as you, though. They're all good games, except for Austin Powers Pinball. Seriously. They're all relatively cheap. Like, that's also an order of price. Like, Alien Crush like a $10 game. Pokemon Pinball is like a $5 game. And then uh, Austin Powers Pinball is like They should uh, be paying you to take it away. Austin Powers Pinball is a game you find in the dumpster behind GameStop. Because I couldn't sell it. Thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for coming along, Nick. Why, thank you for having me. Yes. Can't wait to talk about this to other people. Like, comment, subscribe. Especially if you love this man right here. If you like me and want to have me on more episodes where I can fumble around with my food, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank Nick for coming along with me to Taco Bell. He is an awesome co-host, if I do say so myself. As always, I'd like to thank my good friend Alex for creating the art that was featured in this video. If you'd like to see more Let's Talk About Games or any of my other content, please subscribe to uh, this channel right here, Stuff We Play. Also, if you'd like to see more of me, I guess hear more of me, or Alex or any of my other friends that have appeared on the show, check out our commentary channel, Team Nameless. We've done a variety of games ranging from platformers to dating sims to racing games. It's a very fun little thing we do. So anyways, until next time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>